Um, so we're going to talk about um, three things which can hopefully add to what we know as fundraisers. So the first one being you get what you pay for, some stuff about mental accounting, and then a principle that we're aware of, but I think the BE literature moves it on, is the idea of anchoring. So you get what you pay for, how value is constructed. So the guy on the left here is uh, a chap called Salvador Asael. Um, he's dead now, but his business is a pearl business. He was known as the Pearl King. And uh, in the 70s, um, he'd inherited this business from his father, and he came across um, in Tahiti uh, the, the Black Pearl, which at the time there was no market for whatsoever. Um, and the way he went about marketing those Black Pearls, which had no intrinsic value, and the notion of a pearl was all about its beautiful uh, uh, white colour and its, and its perfection. Um, and black pearls didn't have a market. And the way he went about marketing those was to put them on Fifth Avenue in New York in a very expensive uh, jewellery store next to $4,000, $5,000 jewellery pieces and actually price them at a premium to standard pearls and, of course, restrict the supply at the same time. And by doing that, he created a market for black pearls, put them in demand, made them appear to be more valuable than standard pearls through, through their scarcity, um, but also simply through putting a high price on them, he created this market for black pearls. That's an interesting story, but there are more powerful examples. Uh, and the reason I've got an aspirin up there, and this is from the hourly book, is um, they've done social experiments where people have been given uh, aspirins that they're told cost $2.50 and aspirins that they're told cost $0.10. Cents. And the reported uh, benefit to pain relief from the people taking those tablets uh, is twice as great in the case where people believe they've paid $2.50 for an aspirin when they believe they've paid just $0.10 cents for an aspirin. So not only is there a placebo effect going on, but the fact that they think they've paid more for them actually physically makes them feel less pain, which is quite an astonishing thing. Um, they've also done it with um, there are loads of different experiments on this, with, with energy drinks and people's concentration levels. People score better in mental arithmetic tests when they uh, are told that the drink is more expensive uh, than, than the control. Um, they've even put people in MRI scanners to detect um, their pleasure receptors in their brain uh, when they've been given a uh, what they're told is a $5 bottle of wine versus a $45 bottle of wine and more pleasure receptors are activated when people believe, it's the same wine obviously, uh, when people believe it's a $45 bottle of wine there are more pleasure receptors. So these are physical impacts simply from putting a higher price uh, on an item. And why this is relevant to fundraising, we've not seen this done, it's a hypothesis that we'd love to see tested, is that actually by putting a higher price on something, do you actually make people believe that they're having a greater impact? Do you give them a warmer glow about their fundraising? You know, does two pounds a month really change anything? That's some of the scepticism we face in the marketplace. Or well, maybe if it was 20 pounds or 200 pounds a month, people would really believe uh, it worked. An interesting hypothesis. Uh, the next one, is mental accounting, and this is simply the principle that uh, not all money is created equal. Uh, so uh, I don't know how you manage your home finances, uh, you probably, if you're anything like me, have lots of different pots which you mentally allocate to different things, whether it's rent or Christmas presents or um, all the different expenditures that go out of your household, and everybody does this. Uh, the result of this is some money is really hard money, the money in your bank account, and some money is quite soft money, which you don't mind being frivolous with and, and spending on, on uh, you know, quite quickly. Um, and we've shown this uh, when we uh, did an email with PayPal for the, for the Haiti disaster. Um, the money that most people keep in their PayPal accounts um, is money generated from sales from eBay, and that, has, that is very soft money. It's kind of what they used to call pin money. Um, it doesn't, a pound in your PayPal account from something you sold on eBay is not the same as a pound in your bank account, is it? It is, obviously, but not in people's perception. So uh, when Haiti hit, we very quickly, within, uh, uh, I think within 24, possibly 48 hours, we got uh, an email out to the whole of the PayPal base. The incentive to them 
uh, was that it was reactivating dormant accounts, accounts that were sitting there with positive balances but hadn't been accessed for quite a long time. So there's a business reason for PayPal to do it. Um, and we raised, I mean, I remember sitting there pressing F5 because it automatically updated on the computer and, and being astonished as the money rolled in. Over the course of four days, we made a million pounds for Haiti from one email. Now, natural disaster, absolutely, but the, I, I'm, I'm absolutely convinced this mental accounting issue, it's not real money, played a massive part in the success of this particular activity. And something we can do a lot more of. So thinking about also examples where SMS has been very successful, because it's different, isn't it, to the money in your bank account? No, it isn't, but people perceive it to be so. So I think as fundraisers, there's a lot to play with on mental accounting and lots of different ideas I'm sure you can all think of. And then the final one um, is the idea of anchoring. And again, I'm sure you've all heard this term. Um, but what's interesting is, is how far it can be pushed. So anchoring is the idea that if you put um, a nominal figure in someone's head, uh, again, people can't help but respond to uh, the stimulus that you're giving them. So this is an example of, uh, from Just Giving. <coughs> this is a, a researcher from Bristol University who uh, looked at all the data from Just Giving, picking out examples where um, somebody had given a particularly high donation versus the average or a particularly low donation. And you can see the effect um, of someone giving a high donation, it just raises the baseline because the subsequent people who are giving respond to that high anchor. And whilst there's a little bit of regression to the mean on the right hand side, again, when examples where someone's given a particularly low donation, it drags everybody else down. So we respond to that anchor. We're not rationally making a choice about how much we're going to give to that charity. We're simply copying what other people do. Um, this is an example um, from, the, from the Kahneman book, uh, which is, a, again, a charity donation, and starts to make us realise how powerful this idea of anchoring is. This was an example where donors were asked to contribute to a cause which was um, rescuing uh, seabirds off offshore in the Pacific when there had been an oil spill. And they were told they could rescue, uh, contribute to the, the saving of 50,000 of these uh, seabirds. Um, they were told, given a forced question, would you be willing to contribute $5? Would you be willing to contribute $200? These were uh, alternate cells in the test. And there was a situation where they were given no anchor, so would you be willing to contribute? Uh, and the stats are plain to see. So no anchor, they gave uh, $64. Uh, with a $5 anchor, they gave on average $20. But with a $200 anchor, they gave $143 on average, which is clearly just an absolutely massive result. People don't know what 50,000 seabirds costs. So that anchor point that you give them is critical in determining how they respond. And the final one, and apologies for the really bad photo on this, um, we'll try and improve this for the, for the deck that we put on the website. Um, this was me taking a picture of one of the books in my phone last week and forgetting to update the image, so sorry about that. Um, this is um, a, a final example from Public Service Broadcasting in America. They hold uh, fundraisers um, to, uh, to fund the station, and uh, the example here is a control versus a $75 anchor, a $180 anchor, and a $300 anchor. And again, you can see uh, the effect of people being told what the last donor gave. The interesting thing about this study um, is that it says that it's the 95th percentile in that curve of donations where you get the peak in the middle where most people give. The, the optimal anchor is at the 95th percentile, which shows how far you can push it before people start to go, that's just too expensive, and then it flips them over into you know, giving lower amounts. So this is something that we can push really, really hard, um, and I think that's what the BE stuff really teaches us about anchoring. So, I've given you a bit of a whistle-stop tour, hopefully some interesting ideas to think about, and hopefully some hard evidence that this stuff drives response and drives value for us. Um, 